Cylinder head upgrade on an LS. What's it worth? How much are ported stock heads worth? How about aftermarket heads? What's a head swap worth on a Stroker 408? What about CNC ported heads on a Turbo 48? How much are ported LS3 heads worth on a stock LS3 or a cammed LS3? Then how much are they worth on a 468 Stroke? Hello everybody, I'm Richard Holder and as always, welcome to the channel. Today we're asking, what's it worth? And we're talking about cylinder heads. That's right. How much are either ported heads or aftermarket heads worth on an LS application? Well, the answer as always is it depends on what we're putting it on, right? Check out these three tests. We've got a Stroker 408 Cathedral Port. We've got an LS3 Rec Port. And we have a little Turbo 4.8. How much are head upgrades worth on those. Okay guys, let's jump right in and find out what's it worth, what are cylinder heads worth, what are ported heads worth, or aftermarket heads worth on an LS application. And before we get into the results of all this, we have to understand something very important. The gains that you get from a set of ported heads is going to be a function of two things. One, the heads. You have good ported heads where they done properly, but also the motor that you're putting them on. If we take a set of ported heads that have enough flow rate to support, say, 600 horsepower, but we put them on a cammed 4.8 that only makes 400 horsepower, the fact that we have 600 horsepower heads on a 400 horsepower motor doesn't mean that we get 600 horsepower. The heads will support that, but you don't have enough motor to take advantage of what those cylinder heads have to offer. So the gains that you get from even really good ported heads that we know will support a lot more power, and I have the video or I have the test coming up for you where we show you exactly what happens when we put really good ported heads on an otherwise kind of stock motor. But keep that in mind as we go over all those these results. But let's take a look. I built a motor that really did need airflow for a particular test that I did to take advantage of exactly that. All of the airflow and power potential that the cylinder heads had to offer. So I did this as a test for hot rod way back. And we tested, I don't know, 10 or 12 different aftermarket and you know, factory ported cylinder heads for the LS Cathedral Port application. So I built a test motor. This was a 408 stroker. So that means it was a six liter block with a four inch stroke crank. This one was originally, I think, uh, uh, showing it as an LS2 or something, but probably was not an LS2. We had a good size cam in this thing. This one was a comp cam. It was a 239, 247 degree duration, 624 lift at 114 degree lobe separation angle. We had the stock LS3 injectors, inch and seven eighths headers. We put comp 172 roller rockers on it, I'll show you. We did this and we started that and we ran everything with a fast LSXR intake manifold or LSXRT. And what we did was start out with a set of stock heads and then we compared all of the ported stock heads and then aftermarket heads to that stock head baseline. In this case, our stock head was a set of 241 castings, which means that they originally came from a 5.7 liter LS1. So here's what happened when we ran our 408 stroker combination with the LS1 heads. It did okay. It produced 549 horsepower and 517 foot-pounds of torque. So here's what happened when we put one of the sets of aftermarket heads on. This was a set of Airflow Research 245 heads. And quite honestly, on a 408 like this, I don't know that I would pick the AFR 245s. I might pick something slightly smaller than that. But these things performed really well. And the, this is what the guys from Airflow Research said that they sent when we said that we were doing this kind of testing. But with the, And the Airflow Research heads had much bigger valves. They had a 2165-16 valve combination. These things flowed 360 plus CFM on the intake and 265 on the exhaust. Like the name says, 245 cc intake ports and 88 cc exhaust ports, and 65 cc combustion chambers, full CNC ported, you know, titanium valve, uh, titanium retainers, and they had a spring package on them and everything. But once we installed the airflow research heads, the power output jumped to 623 horsepower. So we picked up like 75 horsepower or so. And 559 foot-pounds of torque. So again, we had more horsepower and more torque basically everywhere with the Airflow Research Heads. There was a slight loss down low, which I find interesting. Normally, I don't see that when we do head comparisons like this. Maybe a change in, um, maybe a change in static compression or something from the heads. But at any rate, this gives you an idea how much a good set of heads will add to the right LS. Now let's find out what happens 
under boot. Okay, now let's take a look and see what happens when we install a ported head on a turbo application. In this particular instance, is a 4.8 liter. And actually, we ran this with a stock camshaft in this and compared the stock heads to a set of TrickFlow Twisted Wedge CNC ported Gen X 205 heads, which are excellent heads and, and, and arguably one of the best heads for that particular small, small bore motor like the 4.8 and the 5.3. But this particular one was a 4.8. It was an LR4, so stock block, stock crank, stock rods. We did have the small dome JE pistons that I had run. I'd run this particular motor with a lot of testing on it. So a small 7cc dome on it. We had the stock camshaft in it. We had the stock 706 heads, the truck intake manifold, an Akivab standard size throttle body. Stock rockers, we ran it with long tube headers and 36 pound injectors. And we ran this thing NA to begin with. And the thing produced 336 horsepower, 345 foot pounds of torque. Here's what happened when we added the turbo. So we had the turbo, this is about seven and a half pounds. We added a single, single turbo. It was a DNA, uh, the GT45 turbo, two turbo smart wastegates. We had a single Y pipe to feed the turbo. We had an air to water intercooler. We had uh, wastegate springs at seven pounds. And then we optimized the air fuel and timing with our Holly HP management system. Run with the stock heads and the single turbo, 524 horsepower, 529 foot pounds of torque. Here's what happened. We kept the turbo on when we added the trick flow heads. And you can see we picked up quite a bit of power with the trick flow heads. Boost stayed the same. In fact, with the heads, the boost actually dropped slightly by about three or four tenths of one pound of boost. So from seven and a half down to 7.2 or 7.3. Um, but the power jumped up dramatically. Uh, the power is now up to 574 horsepower. Peak torque was up to 566 foot pounds. So we got pretty good gains from just doing a cylinder head on a stock one. The important question here is, should you do that? Probably not. Since we have a turbo on it that's capable of like 750 horsepower, we could easily get there if we just turn the boost up with the stock head. So there's no reason to put the trick flow heads on unless you're going way up in power where you would start getting concerned about either the flow rate of the head. And the thing that I would be concerned with is the deck thickness of the head. You can, you can exceed the deck thickness of the stock head once you start really putting the coals to it. So I would start considering that thing, but for anything that's like a thousand horsepower or less, just use the stock head unless you're trying to make as much boost as you can with, I mean, as much power as you can at the lowest boost that you can. Here's what happened, interestingly enough, and this is what most people would do. If we now added a cam to it, which we did, we added a BTR stage one turbo cam to this thing and kept the boost the same. Peak power jumped up to 646 horsepower. Peak torque didn't change dramatically a little bit still 572 foot pounds or so it just as it carried it out a lot farther with the cam there was a loss in power compared to the stock cam below 4700 rpm so important things to consider when you're looking at this stuff most guys uh stock head cam and then turbo obviously you have to have the injectors and all those things and if you're looking for that sort of thing if you're looking for a good cam to run with boost on a 4853 or 60 uh, check out my website or check out my store at richardholdnerperformance.com i'll go ahead and put that up here we've got camshafts and springs on sale we've got injectors so all the things that you'd need to do this and then you just add your turbo and away you go now let's find out what happens when we do a cylinder head swap on a rec port LS3. Okay, our final comparison, I'm going to show you what happens when we put ported heads on a stock LS3 and to show you what happens in terms of power output. So we have uh, what is essentially a bone stock LS3. The LS3 is a crate motor that we got from GM Performance Parts. To shout out to the guys at Gandrid Chevrolet from way back. LS3, basically long tube headers, open throttle body, Mazir electric water pump, tuned with the Holly HP management system, you know, so an optimized tune and stuff. We run these colder than we do from the factory, so it makes more power than the factory's rated at. When we run these things in this condition with no accessories and, you know, headers and all that, uh, an LS, this LS3 made 495 horsepower and 491 foot-pounds of torque. I probably run a dozen of these 
they're all with one or two horse within one or two horsepower. That this is what they do. And so what we did was we put a set of CNC ported GM performance parts LS3 heads. So these heads that have been treated to CNC porting, and they flow a lot more. They these stock ones flow 310 to 315. The ported ones throw flow 350 or 355 or so. So so a good bit more. But here's what happened when we added the CNC heads. You can see we got little or no power. I mean, we got about 10, so we were up at 500 and 503 horsepower or so. Torque is up to 497 foot-pounds. So you can see, not just not very much of a gain, and not because those heads don't work. I'm going to show you how well they work. In fact, I'm going to show you that they'll support way more than 700 horsepower, but we just didn't have enough motor to take advantage of even the stock LS3 heads, let alone something that, that you could make another 100 horsepower with. But here's what happened when we added a cam to this combination. We added a Texas Speed cam in this case which was a 231, 236, 644, 614 lift, and a 111. These are all with the fast, or not the fast, but with the factory LS3 intake manifold with the 92 millimeter throttle body on, the, on that LS3 intake manifold. Peak power was up to 572 horsepower. So now, while, while the cam looks like a hero now, the reality is that... <laughs> It already had ported heads on it, already has displacement, already has compression, so it's just waiting on the camshaft. Had we done it in reverse, we would have solved more from the cylinder head. But the important thing is that you have to have enough motor to take advantage of the cylinder head. And I'm going to show you what happens. We ran these very same heads, in fact, these exact CNC ported GM Performance Parts LS3 heads, but we ran them on this motor, you could see. This was a 468 inch stroker. It was 12 to 1. It had a big camshaft in it. It had a a mass single plane split intake manifold on it, a 4500 carburetor on it. So it had basically more of everything, but it had those same heads on it. And so we know now we have a combination that can take advantage of the 350 or 60 CFM. And we know that it was taking advantage of it because we made 720 horsepower and peak torque was up to 629 foot-pounds of torque. This is what I'm talking about when I tell you, you need to have a motor that can take advantage of what the head has to offer. Excuse me, just because you put a set of ported heads that will flow a lot and make a lot of power, don't expect that you get a lot of power from your smaller motor. You just don't have enough motor. You have enough cylinder head, and there you are. When you want to know what's it worth, this is the place to come to. I'm Richard Holder. Please make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff, and make sure to check out richardholderperformance.com for all of your LS needs.